Welcome to the Bio Balance HealthCast, episode number 314, Anti-Aging Medicine and Hormone Replacement in Europe. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Three years ago, almost three years ago, we published a book called The Secret Female Hormone, and it was released for publication in the United States as a predominant market, but it was also sold and released in India, in South Africa, in England, Canada. in Canada, and in the United States. Uh, all English-speaking countries. And we have subsequently, over the last three years, been promoting. We've been doing the health cast that you're watching now uh, and promoting the book. And we're working on writing uh, an addendum to the book or an up update to the book, uh, as well as a man's book. Uh, Dr. Maupin is a member of an international medical society that is considered to be uh, the, the forefront of what we call anti-aging medicine. The United States allows for the production and distribution of bioidentical hormone pellets, and that's the predominant focus of her business at BioBalance Health, but she does hormone replacement therapy in her practice, and she still has a very active and growing practice. But we have been working for more than three years now to promote the concept of hormone replacement therapies in a, in a much more uh, widespread interpretation about the impact of hormone replacement on aging. And that uh, particularly the replacement of testosterone at the beginning, it's the, the, the first domino in the aging cascade that causes you to deteriorate and, and diminish. Uh, as a result of what we have been doing, we have been getting contacts from all over the world. We've gotten letters, we've gotten phone calls, uh, we've had people send us requests for information, contact us directly, request for information. And as a result of that, we are somewhat aware of the evolution of anti-aging medicine and hormone replacement in Europe. And Kathy has several patients that come from Australia and Europe to see her on a regular basis. And she has some who contact her who can't afford to do that and say, can you help me get in touch with someone here in Europe, in, in Sweden, in mm -hmm. Germany, in England, mm -hmm. uh, where I can get what you're talking about? Because the doctors over here don't know or the medical societies over here are not promoting. Is there, is there something you can do to help? And you've had some excellent uh, encounters with mm -hmm. people that you've been able to help. Why don't you tell mm -hmm. the story of the most recent one from England with most, Dr. Studs? Yeah, most recent... Um, patient is lovely and relatively young for my usual patient population was um, around 40 and she has a terrible autoimmune disorder and also she's menopausal and all they had there because they have socialized medicine in many countries it's all structured differently but in 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 England we learned that uh, most doctors work half their day for the socialized medicine for the National Health Service, which is bare minimum medicine. And then they work the other half of their day for cash, which pays their bills. Right. And, uh, and that is for people who can pay, who get a higher right. level of care. But the National Health Service still dictates what is done and what is available. So kind of like the DEA in the United States. Right, but the DEA is not controlling bioidenticals so much right. at this point. Right. And they do because they're trying to kind of manipulate the population into doing what they want them to do, which is the least expensive thing. Right. Or what they consider the most beneficial, but they haven't, you know, bioidenticals and anti-aging medicine and preventive medicine haven't really hit hit their uh, radar because it it takes it takes cost to make people live longer. Then pe people living longer costs more yes. to a society. Mm -hmm. Now we all want to live longer and live healthier, but that may be more costly. So as a society, we may not promote that. 
if we have socialized medicine. So, so in this society, who used to before the probably before uh, I started doing it. So back in the um, 1980s and 90s, the um, the National Health Service still gave or or acknowledged doctors uh, who gave pellet therapy, estrogen and testosterone pellets to women after menopause or even before for just the testosterone. And it was done even more readily then than it, is, than it was in our country at that time. So they started it. They started doing this. It was great. People all just had to come in once every three or four months, get an injection of the pellets and leave. And that, that was how it went. So now there's a remnant of doctors who do research on pellets, who do, who write about them and have clinics where they use bioidentical hormone pellets. So this, I, I had this lovely lady call me or email me and say, all, she gave me all her problems, all her blood levels. I, I gave her a, I haven't seen you, but this is a diagnosis that I can give right. you only by, it's limited by not seeing you. Right. So um, she and was, I can't treat you and, and I can't, can't treat you, you right. unless you come here. So, right. so I uh, said, I read articles by a Dr. Stud. Dr. S Dr. Stud has written so much on testosterone for women. It is unbelievable. And he's in London and she's near London. So I, I said, here's his name. I don't know exactly his address. Here are the articles he's written. And we've quoted him in our book. Right. And so I think you should take our book to him <laughs> when you go to, for an appointment and say, mm -hmm. you know, I want what she's having. No, I want, I want right. hormone pellets and I need testosterone. And I wrote down what I thought she a dose that would be appropriate for her, what I would give her, but I'm not her doctor. He had to make the decision. So, so that started out as being somewhat frustrating because I wasn't sure he was seeing new patients, you know, but he was, he welcomed her with open arms. He welcomed the book and he started her on bioidentical sublinguals or, or patches or something that he could access in the national health service but he ordered pellets from the United States. Because that's the only way they can get them. That's the only way. They don't have pharmacies that make pellets there because there's just no market for them because most people just take what National Health Service gives them. They become accustomed to that. Right. Not wanting more out of a system. So they, so so she goes in and she gets her pellets. And I mean, I, I'm on Facebook with her now. And I saw a picture of her now. Oh, I'm not, I, I haven't approved her. Uh, this, you know, saying her name, so I won't, but I saw a picture of her now and she is beautiful. She doesn't look like she's in pain like she was. She looks, looks healthy and vibrant. Healthy mm -hmm. and vibrant. And she has emailed me since saying, This saved my life. I am so happy. I am so functional. I have a life again. Right. And her, her she felt that her life was, was limited or almost gone mm -hmm. without hormones. So this was a life-saving kind of mm -hmm. communication. And it, it's only because of the book that she would have well, read. Well, that's what's exciting about the book. When we wrote the book, that was mm -hmm. our goal, was mm -hmm. to spread the word about how they work and why you have them and who can do them and where to get them. And we were primarily aiming at the American market. Mm -hmm. But when the publishers wanted to publish it in other countries as well, we were, we were excited. I mean, it's a mm -hmm. real ego stroke. And then we were asked to do a book tour in England. Mm -hmm. Uh, to give lectures, the, sell the book, and give a couple lectures and radio interviews and that sort of thing. Uh, it's really exciting to hear three years later that that people are becoming more aware of it, mm -hmm. and that they are in search of treatment mm -hmm. based on it, and they're now able to get it. And but they have to work at it. They still have to push the system, but they can get it. But the more people that do that and yeah. push the system, the more people who will then go see the doctors who do this. There'll be more market for it. I mean, my my first goal in writing the book was to give women hope. Yes. That what the situation that they were in after their testosterone dropped and maybe after their estrogen dropped, both or just the testosterone, that they weren't alone, mm -hmm. that there was hope of being the person you used to be again, and that it was not a dangerous treatment or a surgery or a, you know, it wasn't something complicated it just required finding the right doctor and getting 
and my advice is hormone pellets, it seems to be in all aspects and all in every area, the safest, most effective, most completely most affordable uh, uh, and more, most affordable per yeah. day. If you would, ca if you calculate that. Mm -hmm. So, and, and you get rid of a lot of other medicines and diseases mm -hmm. by taking it. So the most preventive. So I want to give people hope that they're women hope, especially, and now men that they have another, they have a life ahead of them that they don't have to stop living because losing testosterone for some of us starts our aging process. And that's what we're, that's what our goal in this discussion is, is to talk about how, how loss of hormones kicks in aging. And that's why we, that's the first step in aging. That's why we age. We lose our hormones first. Our cellular degeneration, our tissue degeneration, our brain's degeneration follows. Mm -hmm. So that's the primary step. So if we can replace the hormones, then all of the other things that impact us, like radiation. Can be avoided or, or delayed. Or toxins or, yeah. or, or all the stupid things we do, like smoking or excessive drinking or excessive eating. All of those things still impact us. It's just that we delay the onset of those diseases or we, uh, we avoid them. Yes. So, so aging is still getting a year older, but, but I can tell you and promise you that I am healthier today than I was at 42 or 45 or even 40. That's miraculous when you're, I'm 61 and I'm almost 62. So to say that that's, that's huge. And that is due primarily to replacing my testosterone and estrogen after my ovaries were, were removed. So and they had started going bad kind of before that. Right. So, uh, so this is, this is the, this is the, um, the call to action that if you feel like you are aging too soon, if you feel like you are sick as you get a year older or more and more illnesses, more and more medications, then it may be that your testosterone, if you're male or female has, has decreased or female, if you're menopausal, that you need estradiol replacement. And no, it doesn't cause breast cancer. And no, it doesn't cause heart disease. It prevents heart disease. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is not a, this is not an unusual treatment. And it's, it's actually very, it's, it's very economical when you consider day by day and all the other medications mm -hmm. you lose, but, and, and what does being healthy Really, what's the value of being healthy? Yeah, put a dollar value on that. Instead of, of spending being able your to walk days when you're 75, yeah, as opposed to have a walker or a wheelchair and not be able to stand or climb steps anymore. That I I had a um, I have a patient who's lovely in her 50s, and 20 years ago she had her ovaries removed. Mm -hmm. But in the brilliance of the time, she wasn't given estrogen. So. Going, she somehow survived that. I don't know that I would have. And so she's going about her business and she has, she in her normal activity broke both her legs from osteoporosis because her bones got so thin without, you know, her ovaries were gone. So no estrogen, no testosterone. That's what starts a, a huge rapid drop of bone density. So she had thin bones, she broke her bones and she's, she's brittle all over she was. That's why as you age, gynecologists want you to get a bone density test periodically right. mm -hmm. to measure your risk of osteo uh, osteoporosis or osteopenia. But for some reason, they want to give you some other drug that really isn't as good as estrogen and, and testosterone has and has side effects right. that, and it just, it doesn't really make your bones stronger like it's, estrogen and testosterone does. It makes them thicker. they were thicker. educated. I know. It was the state of medical knowledge when they were in school except and they haven't re-educated themselves. Except I, that was a state of education when I was in school right. and I looked at the physiology and the pharmacology of bisphosphonates, which is Fosamax and all the others. Right. And it couldn't possibly make thick bone. Right. It made thick bone on x-ray, but not stronger bone. So yes, it made it thicker, but no, it didn't make it stronger. More lattice work. Thicker. Right. Yeah. It just, it didn't make bones stronger. So I didn't, I, I gave it to a few people who wanted it and who had come in on it, but that was, I, that was not my choice. Hormones were my choice always right. because it always worked better. Right. You kind of have to, as a clinician, you have to go, which works better? 
Yeah. You know, and you have to always follow each problem and see which treatment works better. And, and hormones always work better, but testosterone plus estradiol for women works great. It can, it can recover bone density that is osteopenic, thin bones in two years. And so this particular patient came to me. She had been, she came to me for the very first time four months ago, and she had been on either a walker or some form of cane or walking, walking type assist right. for 17 years. And when I saw her four months after, or three and a half months after her first pellet treatment. And with, she was referred to you for this treatment by her regular physician? No, by her bone density doctor. Bone density. Who had already given her every bone density drug. Drug. Yeah. But, but as is the case with people who often have thin bones, they usually have very little muscle because without estrogen, testosterone, or testosterone primarily, right. you don't make muscle. So even if we make the, somebody's bones stronger, without testosterone, we don't make their muscles stronger. Okay. So she had very uh, atrophied muscles, and she had been going to physical therapy. So just think, all these years, she's been working at this. The suffering. And suffering and having to be use canes or a cane on a daily basis just to get around. Right. And when I went to get her in the waiting room, she stood up and... She on her, walked on her most recent visit. Yeah, on her most recent visit, not yeah, the first visit. The first. first visit, she had canes. Second visit, she stands up and she walks in my office. And I, I, you know, at the at that time, this is I'm I'm bad. I didn't really realize how big an accomplishment this was. But she told me. I mean, I she didn't realize it had been so it. many yeah. years yeah. that she had because many people have hurt their leg, hurt you know, and they use yeah. something to walk. I don't want to draw attention to it if it's a temporary issue and I can't help. But here, her physical therapist had had worked with her and given her exercises that she'd always been doing, but now they worked because her muscles got bit bigger, stronger. Her growth hormone went up drastically, so that showed that she had been making lots of muscle and bone, and she was she had more energy. She she had strength. Now the muscles have caught up to bone density. Bone density is getting better between the very good um, osteoporosis specialist and me and the physical therapist, because I won't take credit for, you know, doing this by myself, because it's it certainly is a team effort. Absolutely. But she was better. Can you imagine? It's like, it's like you know, it's like get off your pallet and walk. I mean, to me, that's what it felt like. I felt that was... Like I, I was like almost in tears as we finished our conversation because I was so you could see grateful. So graphically, the progress that you had helped her make, and so fast, and so fast. And and to me, it was it was it made me so happy that I had this treatment that, for some reason, everyone isn't embracing. But I've been given this knowledge that I can actually use to make someone able to walk because I find that to be one of the most for me, that would be a very difficult situation. Everyone and, isn't embracing it in the United States or in Europe, but you have an article in your hands mm -hmm. that we wanted to talk about today about a physician <laughs> yeah, a in Europe who is embracing it and is mm -hmm. recommending and, and makes the same linear argument that you make about hormone replacement, especially of estrogen and testosterone, mm -hmm. is essential to delay the effects of aging and the negative cascade of issues that occur when one is aging. And this is a physician who's promoting these ideas in the European community. And they're, they're mirror images of the messages that you have been giving. And his name is Nijong Eccles, E-C-C-L-E-S. And he's on Harley Street in London. And so that's in the same area Dr. as Stutt. Dr. Studd. And he wrote an article that was published on a, a website for anti-aging and health in the UK. And so I get that. And actually I get that sent to me by yeah. a friend. And, um, uh, he is one of the leading clinicians in London and in the country, in the UK for giving bioidentical hormones and watching the symptoms of menopause, the symptoms of low testosterone go away and watching people like back up there, reverse their aging. Well, and the important 
part of that is bioidentical. Uh, and he mm -hmm. traces in his article the his evolution to the use of replacement hormones and, that are not bioidentical, got some benefit, but not as much as was needed, and then switching to bioidentical, and you lose all the negative side effects mm -hmm. and concerns about things like cancer and heart issues that go away when you use bioidentical products. Mm -hmm. And he makes the argument that the bioidenticals are less used because the pharmacies don't have any financial remuneration for making them because they're not licensed, uh, owned drugs that you can make a big profit off of. It's always, where's the money, honey? You, you know, go. so so if the pharmacy is not making money, then the pharmaceutical company is not making money. Then they're, and, and worse yet, we are replacing the need for other meds. Yes. So not only replacing the need so for... So they're losing money there too. Yeah, they're losing money because cholesterol comes down. They're losing money because we don't get... Um, Alzheimer's and right. we don't need the Alzheimer's drugs. We get, we lose or they lose money because we don't need the, the, the osteoporosis medications. I mean, there's so many medications you don't need anymore and so many diseases you won't get right. if, of course, you have to do your part, but that you won't get if you replace your hormones, both women and men. And so the reason that we want to bring this conversation to you today is it, it is so validating for us because we've been the voice in the wilderness, at least we think that's what we've been <laughs> we, for it a, feels a number like of it. years. And it's exciting to hear that other people in other countries are now publishing similar data and saying the same thing that we've been saying about how to get healthy and how to age in a healthier way with less costs and less dismay uh, over your lifetime. Well, and today I was reading, I was reading my, I was going through all my Facebook stuff, which is kind of, um, mesmerizing and kind of like you kind of get addicted and an hour goes by, you know, and, and, you know, watch it, looking at all the cute dog and cat things yeah. and, you know, so just like everybody else. And I, I go down and there's this, this huge deal that says, is describing hot flashes and how horrible it is to be a woman and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, say yes, if you agree. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, so if you're so miserable, why haven't you fixed it? Right. Why haven't you replaced your estrogen? Why haven't you replaced your testosterone? Why haven't you asked the, uh, a, a doctor? A real doctor. A real doctor. Your on the internet. And, and instead of just being a victim, yeah. I mean, women, we should not be victims anymore. We have a lot of autonomy in this country. We should be able to say to our doctor, you don't like giving estrogen? Well, then I'm finding another doctor. Right. If we don't do that, then nobody is going to take care of us in the way we need to be taken care of. Or we're going to just find the doctor who will do it. That's okay. But the doctor who won't do it and just says, oh, I don't do hormones. That is such a cop-out. Yeah. That is the end. So you have to self-advocate. You have to say, I know that I need them. I don't want hot flashes anymore. I want to sleep through the night. I mean, do you know the damage that does to you when you don't sleep through the night because of hot flashes? And if you don't know, then read our book. And you will know. Yeah, the secret female hormone has all the information that and you need. And the charts need. that you can follow and say, checklist, checklist, checklist. Take that to your doctor. I have these symptoms. What can we do about it? And you'll already know the answer, but you want to just test him or her and see if she knows. But but this is something, and I, I'm going to put in my one little bit. Okay. Doctors aren't trained in this. Doctors have to go outside their normal American College of OBGYN, which is now 15 years behind the times. Yeah. I read their journal and go, there's nothing in here for me. Yeah. I mean, it's about babies and it's about surgery. That's it. No yeah. hormones, not much infertility. It's, that's and all we got. they don't focus on middle-aged and older women. They yeah, we're worthless. They women in the fertility cycle. I mean, with hormones, we are a very active form, a, a, per, a part of society. And we are very productive because we don't have babies that we're taking care of. We we have the time and the energy to to do things for society and in our jobs and in the world beyond our society. But if we don't have our hormones, we just fade into into the background, and then then the only excitement we get is being a victim. And I just I'm trying to encourage you to get it fixed and not be a victim. Well, I used to teach in school about the bell curve. And there's a bell curve with regard to this issue. You know, when, you, when you're first born and for many years thereafter, at least in, in a, uh, an advanced society, you're a consumer, not a producer. 
So as children, you don't make anything, you don't contribute anything to the economic survival of the community. And then for a, the bell curve, a number of years you do, and then you go off the other end of it into your retirement and you're not contributing in an active way that way either. We can stretch the bell curve for women mm -hmm. who used to drop off and, and be expected to And the bell off. curve for us was much narrower much tighter. Yeah. than it was. And with a lot of us out here, yeah. or out here, excuse me, so, so we can make that bell curve go out. Yeah so that we can be functioning in society and and For employers won't go oh man she's 50 that's it she's yes. done yes i mean that's a horrible legacy to carry with us into the next generation and actually Segway for men too. I mean, your your service mm -hmm. market for men yes. is, is increasing exponentially because men mm -hmm. are discovering they also have these issues. They just get them later. I mean, where, where women tend to get them in their forties, men tend to get them in their fifties mm -hmm. and beyond. But we benefit just as well. That's right. And there's no reason why people have to retire unless they choose to at 65. Exactly. And if you love your job and if you love what you do, and if you want to contribute, and you want to contribute, you can go on beyond that and, and continue to be an active part of society producing something right. instead of just taking out resources. I think that's why, um, like, the PhDs that study the health system look at the money spent on old people or right. people over 50 right. as, as a waste mm -hmm. when because they don't see anything coming out of it. But if we all were were actually, I guess, earning our keep or healthier so we could earn our keep, then we would then be a more valued part of society. Right, right. And we and it, it isn't so much just working a job and getting a paycheck. Mm -hmm. There are ways to volunteer. There are other ways to be active and contribute. Keep yourself mentally alive, physically alive. You can stretch that window where you really feel good most of the days of your life. And one of the ways you can do that is to consider hormone replacement therapy. But in order to get it, you're going to have to self-advocate, self-educate, and demand some response. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.